Hello everyone and welcome to Moonride. This is Dave Johnson and today uh, we're going to look at uh, Barr's report, which is imminent, and uh, just the next week or so and see uh, what's going to happen, right? One um, thing that I've been preaching here a little bit about, and I use the word preaching uh, because I'm the last person who should preach about this, is the use of media and how much uh, media we're consuming. I feel this all the time, like I have to know, I have to know, I have to know. It's a total legitimate need. But I'd like to point out to everybody um, that this is why Donald Trump is president. He is constantly pushing the panic button on TV for us to freak out, and it works. It works every time, whether you love him or whether you hate him. Now, I want you to notice something important. This is Donald Trump's control. The more he throws at us, the more he upsets us, the more power that he has. Now, I'm not saying just don't do anything and ignore it and you know live on some other planet. We have to be active. I think in the future we're going to have to be even more active, and that's a good thing. But I would invite you to take a look at media, see how much of it you're consuming. Notice how is it affecting you, right? Do you get mad when you're watching it, and do you get mad for the whole day? Do you yell at somebody you really care about because you're so upset about, you know, kids in cages at the borders? That is going to happen if we're constantly consuming this. And again, I'm the last person to preach. Uh, I, I say this because I'm, I'm the worst <laughs> at all of these things. These are happening to me. But I want you to notice it. Sometimes I feel it's like the Matrix. And we've all taken this pill and now we can't stop, right? Again, just notice this, and notice that it's really um, much more helpful if we do something. That can be really difficult right now, but um, one thing that um, will make it easier is you can call right now and you can demand that um, the uh, Mueller report be fully released, that it be not redacted, that it be um, available to us as the citizens who paid for it. And you can do that um, by calling this number, one 800 205 6118. Once more, it's 1 800 205 6118. This comes to me from a lady named Shirley Bouchard. I want to thank you so much for helping us with this number. Um, by the way, Shirley's last name is spelled B U R C H A R D, and I believe she's written a couple of books, which I'm going to take a look at later. So um, this will be helpful. You can do something today, right? Uh, Let's see what else is helpful for us to know about Barr's report. So Spirit, can you tell us well, what do we need to know about Barr's report? Okay. Hmm. So much stuff going on. Okay, I see Barr. And bars, um, bars in front of the Senate, and he's ask, answering some questions. The senators up here are very agitated, very angry at Barr. They're um, really furious. They're just, they're just you know, pounding the table and yelling at him. They're barely, really, even giving him a chance to speak. Um, because they're so angry. I mean, that's, it's almost like they're throwing things at them and physically throwing things, not words. So I'm getting that um, clearly they're, they're disappointed in his report and they feel um, as if he's misrepresented that report. I think it's Ted Lou that I'm seeing. Uh, Ted Lou's there. Um, you know, and Ted's just generally a pretty calm guy, but in this image, he looks upset and... Um, I would expect some significant questions from him. Even he is getting very hot under the collar and um, is quite angry. Right? Um, Barr has uh, hidden some stuff. Um, there, there's certainly stuff. It's like he's got a like, sort of separate little report that he isn't showing anybody. So I'm not sure that we'll see the full report. I think that some um, things that are redacted um, are redacted for political reasons. And um, he kind of, 
I think in the last few days he was going to redact more and he's redacted less because that that um, little ream of paper is, is getting thinner. Uh, there's still stuff that he's hidden, um, but um, at very least he's not represented the truth here. Now Barr is thinking in his mind, he has done some things behind the scenes. I do still think that um, he has tried to um, Try to solve some of these problems um, behind our backs, you know, um, uh, what, for better or for worse. He has um, done a bunch of things um, that he believes are better for us. Even some of the Republicans seem pretty angry at our bar right now. And I can't remember this conservative Republican's name, but he's not one of the most conservative ones, the total Trump supporters, but he's up there. And he is also really angry. Lindsey Graham's looking like white as a sheet. He's just looking at the implications of what's going on here. And um, he doesn't know what to do, but he's, um, he's seeing the writing on the wall like this is big trouble for us. Here comes Mueller. Um, Mueller is um, also going to testify. And he doesn't look at Barr. They're sitting next to each other, but he's not looking at him. He's not looking him in the eye. He's like uh, wondering, you know, how could you, you know, almost like, look, we're, we're, we're at this moment, we're not friends. At this moment, we are uh, working um, in two different ways for the, for the good of the country. No eye contact at all between the two of them. Uh, I think Mueller might come out a bit against Barr. Um, in some subtle way, he might say that Barr didn't do what he was supposed to do. Um, he also knows that Barr was trying to do some stuff behind the scenes, but he doesn't really quite agree with how he did it or um, something in this nature. Okay. Um, hmm. It's funny because I get a school bus. There's a school bus and a bunch of people get out of the school bus. Mm, okay, it's Nancy Pelosi and a bunch of other people. And it's kind of like they got schooled. Yeah, it's like they got schooled. And as they're coming out of the bus, they're sort of brighter. You know, like, ah, okay, um, now we know what's really going on here. Um, understand that in some sense, there are good things going on. Uh, the people who are Democrats would not be getting this lesson. They wouldn't be learning what they need to know if this stuff didn't happen. Um, this is practice for them, practice to um, do better and um, be more assertive. Um, uh, Nancy has certainly taken some notes. Hmm. And there's another um, guy, I think he's a senator, young, good-looking senator guy. He's, I know he's from California, and I, I can't remember his name. I think he's just started to run for president. Yeah, this is looking really good for him. Uh, I wonder if his candidacy isn't looking pretty good because of this. He seems to be smiling when I say that. Uh, okay. So what else can we know about this bar report? Ah, here's the other message. Uh, all of this stuff will be really good going into the next election. Uh, I know we don't want to wait the next two years um, while we suffer under Trump, but uh, this stuff will really ensure that the next election is uh, much more to the left. People will be active. Um, the um, left is going to be more active. When I say the left, I mean the Democrats, the establishment ones are going to be more um, assertive, more um, progressive. It's an easy, this is an easy topic to run on. And it will help them launch um, some other programs, real programs that help us like uh, better, better medical care. What else can we know, Spirit, about the Bar Report?
Hmm. Okay, I'm seeing a black hole, right? but I don't, I don't, what does that mean? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what black hole means. I don't know if it's just... Um, Oh, okay. In some sense, I feel like it's a an empty space, so we can put anything into the Bar Report or the Mueller Report that we want to. We can perceive it in the ways that we want, but it's an endless source. It's going to be the source of two years of information that's going to come out more and more and more and more, and all of those things will serve um, to oppose Trump. I often see Trump kind of going crazy in the White House, and this is what I see. And I see a hallway, in a particular hallway, um, that um, he's in when he like realizes how bad this is, and it just how he's just so enraged and angry. Um, And it's funny because he's almost like signing, you know, like a guest book, <laughs> almost as if he, like he's leaving, right? Like this is the guest book where you sign out and say goodbye. Um, that's that's what I get out of it. I, I do think that this will end his presidency. Um, I don't know when exactly. Spirit, do we have an idea of when? Hmm. I'm getting a 1.2. I don't know if that's one year, two months. I don't know if that's one month and two months, or sorry, one month, two days. What does it mean, 1.2? Hmm. It might be it might be sooner than we think. It might actually be in a few months. Is that what we mean? I'm seeing a calendar, which makes me think it's months. Hmm. So Spirit, what else? What else would be helpful um, for us to know? Yeah, um, uh, that hideous um, Stephen Miller has come up again. Mm. So one thing you'll notice about Stephen Miller is that he's now kind of the face of the Republican Party. This might be a good thing for um, everybody in the sense that now we have someone to loathe uh, even more than we might loathe Trump. You know, his cruelty, his viciousness, it's so obvious. It's like looking at a picture of a, you know, a just evil. And um, when people see that, um, that's sort of chipping away a little bit at the hardcore Republicans. Uh, they do have to look at that creepy face and, you know, know that he enjoys hearing tapes of children crying when they're separated from their parents. Um, that's pretty heartbreaking. Um, and... Again, he's so gross that he kind of is serving us. There's something that he's going to do majorly wrong. And um, again, I get a school bus, and I, I wonder if they're you know transporting some of the um, refugees, and there's an accident, or he's just, just the actual act of transporting the refugees. Maybe they really are going to try to do the um, sanctuary cities thing, and uh, that will be just such a disaster. Um, but it looks it looks like a an important moment, right? It just seems like the moment where people have had enough uh, of them because it's a visual crisis. It's not abstract. Something happens. Something goes wrong. I think again with the school bus, um, and maybe it has to do with children. Uh, I don't know, but it, it's I just see a bunch of people who look like you know they could be migrants on a bus, and um, you know, them getting harmed in some way. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, Spirit, is there anything else that we can know about this? Okay, so um, here's some advice from Spirit. Um, just try to meditate a little bit. Um, I bring Spirit um, from above. Right? It feels like a fiery circle. I do this before every video. Um, if you're really feeling stressed, um, and just try the same thing. Um, just um, stand um, maybe kind of like with your hands like this, not fist tight, but just kind of loose. 
and just bring that firelight down um, above you, bring it around you. Uh, it'll take a couple of minutes, just literally imagine it. If you do this with a bunch of people, it works really, really well. Just imagine it, bring that fire down um, and um, you know, take out stuff that's stressful, whatever it is, and let the fire take care of it, let the fire burn it. Um, that will help you in these moments because um, it is going to be really upsetting the next week or so. Uh, but uh, remember, this is just something we're going to go through and learn from. There are fights in the future that we're going to have to fight. And um, we need this practice. We need to know how to get around um, dark powers. Right? Um, it, it will work out in the end. Uh, but we got to keep um, just calming ourselves and acting at the same time. All right? Thanks for watching.